bought these manhole covers off of an auction site and went and picked them up yesterday and I uh, didn't know quite how big they were, there was no size, it's just a really bad picture. So me and the old man went and picked them up and they are massive and we didn't have any, there's no lifting facilities so we managed to get all, all of them on the trailer. Uh, with just the two of us, it was a right nightmare. In the auction there was 10 items and there's only seven left on site when we got there and it, we'd taken quite a long time to get to site to pick them up so I forgot about them initially. Um, but they were really, really cheap. So what would you do? Would you complain that three were missing even though they were really cheap? Or just let it go knowing that someone's probably nicked the other three when they've picked up their auction lots? Yes, yeah, so if anybody needs a decent chamber, hit me a message for sale. So they're Peter Savage B chambers with an opening 1800 by 850. They are beast mode. Had a few concerned viewers with the video the other day about assembling this. Um, in that these joints want to be dead tight and stuff. You'd curve cut these joints to get them dead tight with a handsaw. You're just curving the bits that have not got a gap to suit the bits that have got a gap and it should all lock down together nicely. I'm not going to do it now because this isn't the final assembly. If anything moves, if I curve them all and then they move again, it's just a bit of a waste of time. Those joints are good enough, they're within sort of two to three mil and everything's square when I check the measurements through this frame. So it's all kind of perfect enough to mark these draw bores, give them a little bit extra pull. So I'm going to go about five to six mil on the offset of these draw pegs. And then when I assemble it on site, I can mess about getting these joints dead perfect for that final fit. Got a busy day today, got to disassemble this one, make up another frame and get that checked over and also get some materials and stuff ready for tomorrow. Got to do a bit of concrete in tomorrow to the preparation for fitting this frame. Whenever I'm levering this crowbar, it's on the in the centre of the end grain joint, so you don't see it, and it'll be off. So this bit of timber's being cut off. So it's outside there. And like if I do lever it, it's within the joint, so that any sort of rub marks aren't being seen. And if I've got to do any levering on that one, just use a sacrificial baton behind the bar or do it in the shoulder line again. It's time for the big beast to come out. Just had a miniature panic attack. Um, got that long beam out. I printed this drawing off to get the measurements for it. I thought oh, I'll just check it's long enough. Looked at this one I detailed here. Not looking at the, the arrow didn't go to the end of the beam. And you just know that horrific feeling when you think you've dropped a clanger. But luckily, I knew in my head it was six, six points something. And uh, yeah, we're all good. We're all good. It's about 6.2 to this joint, so we're fine. When I'm setting out anything now, and I want to be sure of these measurements, and not, if there's a lot of posts or a lot of, of items, to avoid that 
uh, setting out error from measuring between them all the while. I always go from the end and do the increment measurements from that position. So from this end post, you've got your two meters 60, then you've got this one down here, which is three, eight, three, six to that post. And I'd keep going for every post, subsequent post on from it. And that way you can sort of cross reference and, and lose that repetitive error from say marking your 200 mil and then marking your 1376 on and then at the 200 then marking off that you can be a few mil out by the end which is not so bad on green oak work but it's also a good reference to check to see if you've got that 100 mil out error which is where you would start your tape measure on 100 mil rather than the end because it's not very accurate against the line but i'm just cross checking these with my drawing make sure that's on the end post and we've got 3836 was my marking point so we're pretty much spot on there, which is nice to know that we're going to get it right. Anyone in the joinery trade will know that uh, the 100 mil error, when you have made something and nearly finished it, and you offer it up to a frame or something, and it's 100 mil too short, it's just like, it's horrific. <laughs> it's really horrific. We've all done it. Right, I've checked this one three times now, because it's a beast of a bit of wood. And it's time to just do it. This single piece of wood was nearly 600 quid. And I haven't got a spare. Anyway, since you guys have seen pretty much most of this with the last frame, I'm gonna try and get some cool cinematic shots while the sun's kind of setting. Should be pretty cool. The sun's setting on me here, I keep getting distracted by different things. Oh, well, I'm gonna get this done today. I'm not going home until this is done. On this end of the beam, we've got a mortise to cut. I can't cut that until I know the position of this saddle stove, which I can't get until I've set it. So that is the next job on my list to do, is set these saddle stones. I can get that cut and carry on. The sun has set, but it's still fairly light. Uh, it looks lighter on the camera, but I'm off home before it gets completely dark. So see you in the next one. <laughs>